big things you have to worry about at media day, right? Yep. <laughs> well, teach you got a little, little win streak going together, right? I mean, talk to me about like the, the feel. I mean, I got to imagine that changes the feel around the camp, that, you know, in, in practice, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I came off a little skid, and now I'm back on the run up, and I'm excited for this next fight. I think, you know, um, I'm back in the talks, and even after this fight and like, this weekend, I feel like it'll be more uh, intact and ready to take someone on in the top five. Yeah, no doubt. You talk about the, the setbacks that you had. I mean, obviously, you're like a lifelong martial artist, so I mean, I know you, you have the skills and you believe it, but was there any like second guessing or just like, what's, what's going on here? I'm not, I'm not used to this. Um, yeah, I definitely wasn't used to losing. <laughs> um, it was, you know, hard. It was hard on me mentally just to get in there every single fight and come back and fight another champion. Every single time it was like champion after champion. I'm the only one in my weight class who's fought all five of the champions. Um, so I haven't had an easy route, but I'm still here, you know, seven years later in the UFC, making my way. I feel like I'm hitting my prime and, you know, this is just the beginning for me. Do you feel like there was anything that, that you did that, or that clicked or that you had to like actively change that's resulted in? I mean, like you said, it was a list of killers, so it's not exactly like you were you know, losing to bums out there. But have you, have you changed something specifically that you can point to? Um, I'm big on my mental health. Um, almost two years ago now, I you know, came out publicly saying that I've been struggling with my mental health. And I feel like that's really helped me. Um, in, in my own battle outside the octagon and inside the octagon and just gaining more confidence. Honestly, I felt like at that point in time when I was losing, I gave my opponents all the credit and I was like, they're amazing athletes and you know, I'd go in there like worrisome. But at the end of the day, they're human like me and they're not gonna do anything different than a, a girl has done in the past. And I am amazing. So, um, you know, since then I'm just, more inclined to think valuable and highly about myself, and I feel like that's what's helping me be more confident in the octagon. Nice. Uh, this matchup, were you excited to put it back together again, or did it, did it, did it kind of annoy you when the name came across the table again? What, what was your thought? When I got this initial matchup, it was December of last year, and she got COVID. Um, then it was canceled, and I got the last minute replacement, which I was thankful with uh, Sam Hughes. And then, you know, that was the only name Mick was shooting at me, and I was like, Come on, Mick. Like, I'd really like to fight someone ranked above me. You know, I've been in this game a long time, and I'm 31. I'm only getting older, and I, I want to make it to the top. And he wasn't giving me any other names, to be honest. I said I'd fight anybody. Um, you know, and I haven't fought since December. I said, you know what? I'll just fight. I'll take it. I'll get a great win, and then, you know, I'll make sure that he has to give me somebody ranked higher than me. And then she doesn't have the ranking that, that you'd like, but uh, what do you think about her as an opponent? I mean, obviously, she's come a long way since the first time you guys met. Yeah, the first time we fought was six years ago. We were a lot younger, not as much, uh, you know, cage time, octagon time. A lot has changed, you know. That fight, yes, I did win, but I don't think it has any effect on this weekend. Every fight pos um, possesses its own, uh, I don't know, it's, it's its own fight, you know. We're zero and zero going in there. Anything can happen in a fight. I'm just excited. I, I know she's a tough fighter. She's more of a striker than anything, you know, traditional Muay Thai. Uh, but honestly, uh, I'm going to beat her everywhere the fight goes. Striking, ground, wrestling. I'm confident 100% of my abilities this weekend. I know you said it's a fight, but does it have any value mentally at all? Like going in there and be like, come on, you, you know what happened last time. Well, yeah, you know, I did beat her last time, so it does give me a little upper hand on her. Um, but on, like we said, we're different athletes from six years ago. Um, I don't care what she's bringing in there. I know she's going to be tough. They're all tough. But I know I'm bringing 100% of me. This is going to be the best uh, fighter in me. I'm the best version of myself in the best shape of my life. And I'm really, really excited to put on a show. My last fight, um, it ended in one round. You know, that's awesome. But I honestly wanted to go back in there in the second round and do things that I'd been working on. Nice. Let's say for me, I mean, uh, are there specific matchups that you see? I mean, I know you said like top five, but I mean, I guess you got to do mixed job for him because he's just going to give you the same name. I mean, are there any matchups that make sense, you think, with, with an impressive victory here? Um, no, not really. Uh, I just, I really know that I need to win this fight, win another fight. And I think if I win another like top fight, top five fight, I'd be able to, you know, get in that title contention spot. So I'm very aware that, you know, I'm a few fights away from being a title contender. Um, and I'm going to make that happen. Hi, teacher. Hi. Um, <clears throat> um, Angela, Angela Hill referred to your first fight as the worst fight in UFC history, um, maybe because you lost. Um, how, do, how did you feel about that fight since there were boos and uh, from my memory, it was a pretty wrestling heavy fight. What did you, how did you feel about it? 
What I remember about Angela and I's first fight is uh, the altitude. I was coming from sea level. Uh, I'd never fought anywhere or trained anywhere above, you know, three feet above the ground. So um, in that fight, yeah, it was a wrestling fight. I had, to, I did what I had to do to win the fight, take her down and just honestly kind of lay on her. I was dying, so, she, so was she. Like, I was breathing heavy, but trust me, Angela was breathing five times heavier than me on, on the bottom, you know? So, you know, a fight's a fight. If it's boring, it's boring, but I won. My hand was raised, so I don't care anything else outside of that. Well, just as a fighter, was that fight just kind of a, fighting Mexico City, was that just a miserable experience, though? The fighting in Mexico City, the actual fight, yeah, that was miserable. If I fought again now, okay, get, I'll fight tomorrow. You know, I live in Denver now and train out of Denver, uh, so I'm more than, you know, ready for that. But uh, outside of the octagon thing, no, I loved it. You know, I, I, I'm Hispanic, I'm Latina, so it was awesome fighting in front of um, Mex Mexican people. I was referring just to the altitude. Oh, okay, Not yeah, Mexican but yeah, the altitude, it, it was <laughs> shitty. <laughs> and um, just a quick change, um, referring something you said before about uh, mental health. Um, do you have anything to say about, um, if, if, if you kept up, because I know you've been in training camp, but the Simone Biles situation in, um, in uh, the Olympics, how she, you know, she pulled out because of mental health issues. Do you have anything to say about any sympathy or criticism of that um, decision she made? I don't have any criticism towards Simone Biles. I think she did what she needed to do. Um, I've been struggling with my mental health for a very long time, and for somebody to have a platform, a platform such as hers and myself, um, and to be open and honest about it, I think that's you know amazing. Uh, for so long, I was embarrassed about dealing with my mental health, and I didn't want anybody to know. I was, I felt like I was different. But honestly, the stigmatism be be behind mental health needs to be normalized because we are normal, but we just struggle with a little bit, you know, different things. And I feel like at any point of someone's lives, they can struggle with mental health. It may not be, you know, to the extent of others, but we all, you know, struggle with our own things. Thank you. Cool. Cool, thank you guys.